Hello, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and boy is this an early piece of great post-war R&B concert poster history. Take a look at this. If you found this video, you probably know the importance of Johnny Ace, and everyone knows the importance, perhaps, of Big Mama Thornton, both together on one poster from 1953, and what great graphics. Just a really lovely, beautiful, and scarce early rhythm and blues concert poster from right around the mid-mark of the century. We are talking two legends here. I mean, Johnny Ace died way before his time under suspicious circumstances, so that's part of the reason for his legend, plus his great material. And of course, Big Mama Thornton, she's half the poster, or almost half the poster, and such a legend in her own in her, in her no, such a legend in her own right. <laughs> um, okay, so this was a tour blank. You can see, you know, 80% or whatever is the colored portion, and the top white portion there is where each individual date, venue, and ticket information would be printed in. This just says Legion Hall, and not much more other than ticket locations, but uh, of course there's a million Legion Halls scattered throughout America, but based on the ticket locations, I'm guessing this is from Kansas City. Just a beautiful design, you know, Johnny Ace, and so what do the designers do? They take an Ace car, Ace of Diamonds there, and have that as sort of the template for his name, which is just really a sweet touch. And then you've got both Johnny Ace and Big Mama with their smiling faces in the form of floating heads, you know, I think that was called in graphic terms, so that's very much, uh, you know, a timepiece of this. And just this beautiful array of, you know, type fonts and sizes and shapes and, um, you know, just a great angular layout, you know, all those slanted lines just has a lot of visual dynamics going for it. And another bonus is it has both song titles, which are always important and nice, and record labels. I always love it when record labels appear on these old posters, and then you've got the importance of Duke Peacock, out of Houston, which was a great, important rhythm and blues label in the 50s and 60s. And so it's just wonderful that Duke Peacock's mentioned on here as well. And boy, oh the songs, oh the song titles. Let me get in just a little bit closer for this. You can see there with Johnny Ace, you've got My Song. Well, actually, t taking them as a pair, My Song and Hound Dog from Johnny and Willie Mae, respectively, were both number one for two months each. Number one for two months each. I mean, it's just such a heavy poster, such successful talent, you know, and there's not a sprinkling of opening acts you've never heard of. It's just these two legends that's so, impre you know, so impressive. And um, then there's, you know, lots of little aspects to a poster like this, which, have I mentioned, it's a standard 14 by 22 inch boxing style window card. Um, there's little things like, you know, um, you just gotta love it when the artists are actually described for the buying public. I really like that. So it says Johnny Ace, Piano Wizard and Vocal Star. <laughs> and for Big Mama, the Exciting Blues Shouter. You know, you just, you just gotta love that. And then for Johnny Ace, it says in small print, I don't know if you can see it, every record, a hit record, <laughs> with an exclamation point. Hey, why not get closer? Let's test out the focus here. Look at that. Um, you know, it's just so much fun wordage like that. You just know it's great fun to design. You have to remember, back in this era, a lot of concert posters look like this. Hello? Boring! I mean, sure, I love Miles Davis, especially in the early 50s. This is from 54. Nothing but just, you know, plain type on a white background. So, gosh, you get something like this and you just really appreciate it. All the effort that went into it and all of the dynamic visual appeal. And then you put your palm to your forehead when you realized it was fully intended to be thrown away on Saturday, July 11th <laughs> of 1953, thrown away after the concerts. That's just crazy. So we have to give a lot of credit to the E.J. Warner Poster Manufacturing Company for, I assume, designing this, but certainly at least printing it and making it look so great. So now on the Johnny Ace uh, song tip again, the other song given besides my song is Cross My Heart, and that went to number three position on the R&B charts earlier in 1953. Now a song that is not on this poster but just hit the charts this very week, Billboard's race music charts, if you will, the R&B chart, July 10th of 53, Johnny Ace's The Clock first charted, and that would go to number one for five weeks. I mean, geez, these guys are such prolific hit makers, you know, this pair. Although when you do get to Big Mama, it's really interesting. I mentioned Hound Dog was number one for two months. That was your only charting record period. Isn't that amazing? How can you have a 
you know, it's it's one thing to have a big hit and nothing else. That's bad enough. How can you have a monster hit, number one for two months, and never chart anything else? I don't know what the, um, you know, there's probably all kinds of backstory there, a business story, personal story, <clears throat> maybe... You know, the uh, the DJs weren't paid to play her follow-up records, and so Paolo was rampant, or maybe, you know, who knows what the reason is. But that's really surprising when you think about it. That's really quite a quite an amazing thing. Um, it does say, you know, the Hound Dog gal, she did not write Hound Dog. Lieber and Stoller did, but they wrote it for her, which is really cool. Very early effort by the legendary producing team of Lieber and Stoller, who, of course, would become the key uh, raw songwriting rock and roll duo of the late 50s with Elvis Presley and everybody else. But yeah, they wrote it for her. So she hers was the first recording of like 250 known versions of Hound Dog. Holy cow, so real important thing. Elvis, of course, sold 10 million of it. Um, what Big Mama Thornton did write was Ball and Chain. And uh, as you know, Janis Joplin took that song, transformed it, made her her own, and turned it into an absolute showstopper, such as in the Monterey Pop movie, So, uh, and helped catapult her to world fame, of course. So for Big Mama, boy, that's quite a legacy, isn't it? Holy cats, giving an enormous boost early in the careers to both Elvis Presley and Janis Joplin. Whew, man, what a legacy. So getting back to Johnny, the headliner, though, uh, Paul Simon in the 1980s actually wrote a song called The Late Great Johnny Ace in Tribute. Johnny would die, unfortunately, Christmas Day 1954, the next year, under mysterious circumstances, but it was ruled a suicide. Um, Johnny had worked, by the way, with B.B. Uh, King and Bobby Bland before going solo. He only had six top ten R&B hits before his death, but his final one, not on the poster because it was from 54, Never Let Me Go, was performed by Bob Dylan and Joan Baez as a duet on the Rolling Thunder Review 20 years later. So, um, and uh, as a matter of fact, one more thing about Johnny Ace and his amazing chart success. After his death in early 55, Pledging My Love went to number one for two and a half months. <laughs> these guys had all these records that were number number one's hard enough to achieve, but for months at a time, it's just cray cray. And um, Elvis re recorded, uh, by the way, Pledging My Love as an album track in the 1970s. So so I did say this is a tour blank, and I've mentioned 53 and 54 a lot. This is summer, of course, of 53. Take a good look at this image, and I'm going to show you what E.J. Warner did with this poster for the next year, 1954. It's very, very similar, and yet it's different in every way. And I'm going to hold up a photo of that. And as you can see, um, it's got pasted over venue info there. But look, at you've got, you know, the, the, the playing card, the ace playing card is missing. But look how similar that is in so many ways. I don't think I can get a, a big image and a small image in the same shot. Yeah, sure I can. Yeah, okay. A little bit held at an angle. But it's just interesting, these tour blanks, how they would change them sometimes from year to year. And, uh, you know, they're all fun. They're all collectible. They're all tough to find. And yes, I love them. <laughs> I love them all. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for stopping by, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.